Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander Score Studio. Welcome to the show. Okay, so a lot of great discussion from the community around these types of topics. Again, Wizards taking control of the format, that's a completely different topic. Uh, the, uh, the discussion's already been had on that for a while. Go check those episodes out. But again, the changes moving forward that they're going to be having with the format, those are up in the air. And one that they talked about that is pretty major in that, again, it is is very big for especially I think newer players and ones who aren't as enfranchised and maybe don't have a play group that they play with consistently you know the power levels is that power bracket discussion and one thing that they brought up on that is like they're going to be including combos in those power brackets essentially let's talk about just like how this might come about and also just like the potential problems with this and trying to oversimplify things let's start things off by talking about commander spellbook it's a fantastic resource if you never checked it out make sure you check it out the search engine for edh combos is a great one one thing on this that you might not know and i think i did an extra episode on this feature it's great find my combos it's a fantastic research tool for your own decks essentially where okay you just click that button and i already pre-did this just to make sure that <laughs> i didn't screw up in the episode but basically okay you just click the button and then you go to this page you type in your deck essentially or you know paste in your deck i'm not going to type out all those cards but yeah basically paste it in and all of a sudden it says okay cool find my combos you click that and there you go here are the combos in your deck so again it shows off okay you've got seven combos in here but it also shows off like potential combos as well like you're one piece away from this you're one piece away from that cool now something wizards can take from take inspiration from from this site is just kind of the way that they handle these combos essentially and how wizard says like oh yeah we at least what they said on the stream like we want to like basically have it like a website where you paste in your deck and then it tells you okay what power level is that again i think that's it oversimplifies things i already talked about how like their scale is a bit weird where they're like yeah vampiric tutor is the same thing as armageddon like no way nowhere near um, yeah, power level four and, uh, already talked about that too. Make sure you check out that episode on like salt versus power essentially. So that's a different thing, but also they're like, yeah, they talked about how like combos would be in certain power levels as well, which is kind of confusing because again, like the cards themselves from the combos are probably mostly like tier one cards in general. Like just mostly they are probably tier one. That being said, when you put them together, yeah, it's definitely really powerful. And if your deck is built around combos, that is something that you should be aware of that it, again it, it becomes less of a not less of a casual deck i would say but a higher power deck again if it's built completely around certain combos yet yeah, it's probably a cdh deck then too and so making players aware of what the combos are in their deck and then again like i don't even know how you do this but like they're they could say like obviously like they grade them a certain way where there's certain power levels but like does that just determine your deck power if you just have a combo in it potentially but your deck's not like built around getting it I don't know. So again, that is something where Wizards does need to highlight it. But again, the intricacies of it, again, there's a lot of layers. So there's a lot of intricacies to it. And I think Wizards has good intentions with it. But I think like oversimplifying things might be more problematic than it's worth, especially when it comes to new players. Again, you go to a command fest and like they've got like the different pods of, okay, here's the ones, here's the twos, threes, fours. And it's like, okay, like, yeah, you got to try your best to find that. But there's just different intricacies in there. The website that they make, needs to take a lot of things into account they shouldn't rush it and i think they are going to be rushing it because they want to get it done before las vegas and we'll see how that goes regardless on this episode let's talk about combos that they will be highlighting i would assume that they're going to be highlighting with these you know power rankings and how that kind of plays in and again just needing to give the intricate details of okay you've got this combo in the deck and again i don't know if that should influence necessarily the power level of the deck necessarily or like just put these combos in a specific power tier or just kind of highlight like hey you've got certain combos in there typically with this number of combos or this kind of combo it's not considered to be as casual of a deck as other ones might be so something like that demonic consultation again this is a card that's like no it's it's not a tier four card it, it's a tier one card just on its own it's just hey pay a black mana instant speed lose your deck okay like typically again if it's not using a combo it's a pretty terrible card that's the oracle a very good card one that might still be again like tier two at the most maybe though like on its own like if you're not building a combo around it again just like a deck built around trying to lose your library but like you're not doing it with a combo like demonic consultation where you're like actually just like milling yourself or whatnot like slowly like this is probably like a one 
So, so again, like being able to say like, oh, okay, yeah, the combination of the two, like sure, that's a top tier combo. Like this, I believe is the most popular combo out there right now. Uh, I think it's one of the most powerful combos in CDH. But yeah, it is one, and I guess I should say what Thassa World does. Basically, ETBs, if you don't have a library, you win. Essentially, is that basically what it does. So, being able to, again, put in all these different factors. Again, the power level of the cards in the deck. The saltiness of the cards in your deck. The power of the commander, I guess, is another factor as well that needs to be discussed too. But then also, like, the power of combos. There's all these intricate details that again need to get laid out in a way and maybe I'm just underestimating wizards but I think they're going to oversimplify and it's not going to work out very well but <laughs> we shall see need to be laid out in a way where it's like it explains these things to the player where it's like hey uh, if you're playing a more casual game maybe don't include demonic consultation with Asus Oracle because it's not really all that casual of a combo because you can do it quite quickly and it's really hard to stop essentially and if you've got a bunch of tutors for it then yeah, you're probably building a CDH deck Tainted Pact as well. Like another card that's like a pretty garbage card. Again, unless you're trying to combo with it. Instant that's basically like, hey, uh, if they've got the same name, you get them in your hand, whatever it is. So all of a sudden, or exile, whatever. So all of a sudden, you are going to be, yeah, just losing your deck essentially, and you combo with Thassa's Oracle. Dramatic Reversal, a card that I have played in a lot of decks out there, many of which, almost all of them, I mean, don't combo just like a one other card like Ice Garden Scepter. And many which don't combo at all with it, it's just a very good untap your things card. Which if you have like a tap deck, cool, awesome, great. But if you've got like this, untap all non-parent control, plus Ice Grind Scepter, which basically allows you to recast it again and again and again and again, you have a combo. Again, if you have this combo in your deck, like is this combo of Ice Grind Scepter and Germanic Versal, is that a three then? Is your deck a three because that has this in there? Versus if you have, you know, Demonic Constellation, that circle, is that a four? How do you evaluate that? And again, oversimplifying, like just because I have this combo in the deck, but I don't have any like tutors to go get it or whatnot, versus if I have like tutors to go get my direct versal ice card accept and the entire deck's built around that, like that would technically be more powerful than the other one because yeah, you've got ways to get it. So like, I think again, there's no perfect solution for this. I think that wizards coming up with this solution uh, could cause some problems. And I think that they need to, again, be very upfront and honest with like their user experience on their website and like, hey, like, here's your power level grade of the deck. This basically means nothing, kind of, <laughs> because we're not taking into account these different factors. But the things that you can point out to help players out, I think are very important. Again, the salt score on certain cards. You can point out like, hey, if you're trying to play casual, don't play Armageddon, like ever essentially in casual. Oh, you have this combo of exquisite blood. And I should say what it does really quick. When your opponent loses life, you gain that much life. And Sanguine Bond in your deck. Realize that if you are using a combo like this in your deck, players might start to come after you if you play the Exquisite Blood or whatever because they see that as a combo card. So making players aware, I think, of the intricacies of Commander in a in a way that is you know simplified, in a way that is good for new players, in a way that is understandable for them, and I do think they say this is more of a tool again for like newer players essentially. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun for enfranchised players just to be like, yeah, just throw the deck list in. What's it say about my deck? Cool. But I think it's gonna be a tool more so for newer players just kind of understand, okay, what power level is your deck, what power level is mine, and get the conversation going and like the different pieces of it and things to bring up. Again, they might not be aware that certain combos when they're again veto throne of the dust grows. Like if you're playing this commander, players might assume you've got an exquisite blood in there. Or if you do have one in there, realize that it's a higher power level because you've got your commander plus a one card combo. This is basically saying one bond and you just win the game. Aetherbox Bezvar, yet another card that combos with Exquisite Blood. Marauding Blight Priest, there's so many things. So again, like just throwing out like the different, here's all the combos you have in your deck, kind of like Commander Spellbook does, I think can be a very valuable resource with this, but I don't know if you need to like tie that into the power level of your deck overall, because again, like you've got layer upon layer upon layer, all trying to shove this into one thing and make it work. And I think you're trying to oversimplify something that really can't be oversimplified in that way where you just put like a one number grade on your deck and be like, that's it. It's it's a four. Your deck's a three. My deck's a one. Again, you can have a, with the current system, like you could have a much more synergistic one. Like I talked about like my Joy Redact, which did not have combos in it. Like, okay, my Joy Redact is probably, you know, and it's my most powerful deck that I don't play anymore because it's so powerful and obnoxious to play against because it's Artifact Storm and it takes forever, essentially. But that deck is like a one because it has all cards in it that would be graded at a one. But like the synergies aren't taken into account versus like any kind of an Urza deck or, you know, a deck that just has like a certain one combo in it isn't going to be better than that potentially. So again, Dual Caster Mage, a card that like sees a lot of casual play. It's a very cool card. 
Flash enters the battlefield, copy and insert short spell, choose targets for the copy. Again, this would be still a level one card, though. But in combination with Twin Flame, like, where does that equal? Again, you see this combo again, these two cards together. Them separate is, they're both ones. Twin Flame is just copy a creature temporarily, basically. But them together equals infinite dual caster mages, or, you know, cruel stars out there. A trillion, whatever it is. Dual caster mages out there, swinging, and you win. Heat Shimmer, again, same thing. Combos with dual caster mage. Again, on its own, just a good card. Not one that would be outside of tier one, though. Or again, commanders like Nimbus at Perrin. Like, again, if you just have this as your commander, players are probably going to assume... Again, I should probably read it really quick. Whenever you draw a card, one image any target, or player cast in source spell, draw a card. It's a powerful commander. But, like, they might assume that you've got curiosity in the deck. If you're a new player, you might not know about these combos. Or if you do have the combos, it's like, hey, uh, yeah, you've got some one-card combos with your commander in there. In more casual groups, they might not want that, potentially. But, yeah, make sure you discuss that ahead of time. So... Again, like having these different discussion points for new players and things that they can learn from essentially versus just like oversimplifying it to the point where it's just a number, I think again can cause more problems than it helps essentially. A fitting eye, uh, yeah, again, basically like so, a tandem lookout. So many ways to combo with Nim, is it? Basalt Monolith, like this is one where I have played this in a deck. My very first deck on this channel actually was Nezahal. It did not have a combo in it for Basalt Monolith. It literally was just in there as like, okay, I want to get Nezahalt as quickly as possible. Cost three, artifact. I can tap for three. I don't care about ever untapping it again, essentially. I really don't. So literally just get Nezahalt as quickly as possible, and that's it. Because Nezahalt is going to stay in play probably the entire game. So this, again, is like, yeah, it's a very powerful card, but it's not one that should just like sound the alarm bells just for being in a deck and be like, oh my gosh, the power of this deck is so big. It's a card that can combo, yes, though, and yeah, if you're a player that has this plus Rings of Bright Hearth, yes, that is a combo that you need to be aware of that is in a deck, of course. Forsaken Monument as well, tapping a permanent, you get extra. Or again, Kin and Bonder Prodigy. I think, again, the commander element to the whole thing really throws a giant, giant, giant problematic piece to this where, yeah, the power level of certain commanders is definitely perceived in a certain way, especially ones that do have those pretty easy one-card combos as well. Kinnon says, hey, whenever you tap an L on Perfect Command, you get one extra. Uh, Basalt Moth, I should probably read that really quick again. Tap for three, pay three, untap it. So then it taps for four, and you can pay three to untap it. So it just taps for infinite colorless mana, basically. So yeah, and it also, Kinnon also has a mana dump in there, which is great for you. So yeah, it's an incredibly powerful commander. And again, like, just because you're playing a Kinnon deck, does that turn it into a... Again, like, that's just like the weird thing about the whole power scales. Like, are commanders included in it? We don't know yet. And are all Kinnon decks considered to be a three or above or whatnot, or a four, essentially? Like, Kinnon's a crazy powerful commander, one of the most powerful commanders of all time, I would say. And then, like, if you have this plus Basalt Monolith, is your deck just automatically a four because you've got that combo in it? And you always have access to one of the two cards? Like, the different intricacies, again, I think they're going to oversimplify and it's problematic. Or, like, one combo that I was even aware of, like, Chatterfang Squirrel General. It's a powerful commander, but would I consider this a combo commander? No. Yet this one, I'll read it real quick. If one of our tokens are created under your control, those tokens plus that many, 1-1 one, one Squirrel Creature tokens are created instead. If they have black mana, sacrifice X squirrels, target creature gets minus plus X minus X twelve turn. Play this plunder. Now our creature control dies, create a treasure token. Notably, it does not say non-token creature. So, yeah, apparently this is a combo that I did not know about. I don't know why I didn't know about this, but I didn't. But yeah, it's he's playing a good amount of Chatterfang decks out there. And again, like, does having that combo in it just elevate that deck to a higher level then? Because you've got a card that comes with the commander. There's a lot of different pieces to this. And again, Wizards putting out a solution super quickly, I think, again, can like, you're going to have players who like, oh, okay, my deck's a one because I already checked it once or whatever it is. It's a two. And then they may be updating the system a little bit and then things change. And I just think, again... I see a lot of different layers to this. Another example I put up, Heliod Suncrown. Cool. Plus Walking Bliss. Again, there's a lot of Heliod decks out there that aren't combo decks at all. That are just like a base level Heliod deck that does not have any combo in it is like a one level power deck probably, right? Like, and again, depending on the cards in it or whatnot. But like, it's just regular power. Again, you'd say a seven or whatever, right? And, you know, the way previous, previously things been. But then, like, if you've got a Walking Bliss in there and a lot of ways to tutor for it, yeah, that, that's definitely a higher tier deck because that's a crazy... Crazy powerful quick combo in the right deck out there. Enters with X counters on it. And then uh, you can move counters from it to ping anything for one. Heliod can give it lifelink essentially. And uh, also make it so when you gain life, you get a counter on it. Infinite damage basically. Shield the Apocalypse. Again, a very powerful commander out there already. But you don't have to include a combo in the deck to make it incredibly powerful. 
So again, is it based off of that? Or does, again, just throwing the combo in there just change things entirely appear in the abyss? Target player draws cards, you will have half the number of cards in their library and loses half their life round up each time. Yeah, every time they draw a card, they lose two. They're gonna be out of the game. There you go. Appear in the abyss also comes with Orcish Bowmasters as well. Which, again, is already a crazy powerful card, too. Which is also a salt-inducing card. So, again, there's so many different layers to, like, how you're going to label these cards and whatnot. And saying we have the solution for it, again, I think you really need to... Sure, say that you have a... Uh, a resource for players. It's not a solution. It is a starting talking point. Here are the, you know, problems with our system that we've invented. Because we know that there are problems with it already. And, again, here are... The discussion points that you should be having with other players so i do think that'd be pretty interesting i mean it, it could be it's just it's it's something that again is just it, it's the different layers to it are just pretty crazy where again you've got the power you've got the combos you've got the salt factor you've got the commanders themselves and those four factors are like four very different factors when you're taking everything into account and I think that there's just, you can't have a one size fits all. You really can't. And uh, I think that we're going to run into that issue. Underworld Dreams, apparently. I had this on the list as well. Also, combos with Pure in the Abyss. There you go. Lots of things. So there you go. Gravecrawler, I mean, zombie decks. Like, zombie decks love Gravecrawler, but also, do you have a Phyrexian Altar in that deck too? Because then that's a combo. So having just, again, the Commander Spellbook type solution, I think, is a great one where, again, you have this. You know, put your list in essentially, you know, for the new wizard platform, whatever it's going to be called. You put your list in, it shows off which cards are in your deck individually are at what power levels, okay? Whatever it does for that. It has salt score separately. I think it should, those cards again should be separate and be like, hey, you're playing Armageddon. You should probably just take that out of your deck if you're trying to play casual, okay? Because it's not a casual card, all right? That just, that's not a power level four card. That's just separate, all right? And then with the combos, again, highlighting them in a similar fashion to this. And explaining again, and again, I don't know how you would rank, you know, combos like this one's more powerful than that one, but more powerful than that one. It's contextual based on the on the deck and like what else is in the deck. Are you going to be tutoring for that? Is it a combo that just works like the commander plus another card? How many tutors do you have in the deck? All those kinds of things like are factors into how powerful a combo is in a deck. And uh, yeah, I think there's going to be more context to it than Wizards is going to give. And there's like, yeah, okay, yeah, you've got a tier four combo in this deck. Therefore, it's a four. It's like, all right, if you don't have any way to tutor up the combo, even if you've got that Zorical and Demonic Consultation in a deck, or again, in this example, like Hullbreaker and Soul Ring, like, is that combo a three? Just because that's like a powerful combo to those cards. Or like Sully Intruder Alarm. Is that combo a three or four? Because like, it's a commander. You have access to that plus Intruder Alarm, which is a very good combo piece. Like, trying to evaluate those individually, I think is going to be tough versus just like, here are the combos, Okay. Here are the combos that are in your deck. You've got a you know, seven combos in your deck. That's a decent amount. You know, this probably raises the power of your deck slightly. You also have tutors in your deck, which could get these combos too. Like having all those pieces explained. Again, like you can have like a quick summary or whatnot, but also like having more detail for people to go through and actually understand that. I think you need to give context. And I think that there's going to be a lack of context with all of this, with all the things that they're saying are going to be put into this. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm hoping that they, again, learn from other resources out there. Again, learn from a great website like Commander Spellbook and how they handle combos and show those off and just show, okay, yeah, these are the most prevalent combos right now. These are the combos that, you know, are in your deck. These combos that could be in your deck potentially too, like if you just end up including and adjusting it slightly. But yes, being able to show, you know, what kinds of cards can be problematic or things can be problematic in your deck if you're trying to play in a certain casual way. Yeah, I think... I think, again, it's a nice thought. I think that, uh, again, oversimplifying something that can't be simplified can be problematic, though. But yeah, we shall see. Again, if you haven't checked out Commander Spellbook, make sure you check it out. It's a fantastic resource. Uh, and again, but right now, all you, you can just do, you can use this right now, is finding your combos in your deck that you might not have even known would have been there. Or if, again, your group isn't for combos. Like, oh, okay, maybe I'll take this card out because like I didn't realize actually I had this combo in the deck. Or, you know, like, oh, actually my group is okay with combos. Like, oh, I'm missing this one by one. Make sure you check this resource out. It's a great one. Again, I think Wizards has a lot they can learn from this one. And again, I hope they learn from the community quite a bit because there's been a lot of great discussions around all this, around, again, power versus salt being completely different things. And I really hope that that one specifically they figure out. Figuring out how combos do equate into this power equation for a deck and how those are highlighted, I think is important. And again, just like the entire commander principle of the thing of like, oh, you're playing Urza... Yeah, that's an incredibly powerful commander. Is that just a four? 
I mean, I don't think that that could should be a thing, but you know, like who knows what Wizards are going to handle that with. I do think that if they could find a way to take into account these synergies of a deck, that'd be great. I don't know if they have the technology for that though. <laughs> Again, I think according to MIT, was it MIT that said like Commander is the most complex game of all time and cannot be solved by computers. So again, having something that you're trying to solve with computers with this might be a bit problematic unless you give a lot of context to it. And I really hope Wizards does that instead of just like, oh, okay, go play at your four table, go play at your three table, two table, one table, Command Fest, and we've solved it. And then you've got me playing at the table one with a, you know, Joy Rub, Artifact Storm, level one deck, because all the cards in it are level one. There's no combos in it. And Joy Rub is not a tier, anything above a two, probably, Commander, whatever it is. And then I am just decimating the table. I would not do this is what I'm saying, but... Uh, I'm not saying that I would do this at all. I'm just saying that, like, there are problems with saying, like, that's a one, that's also a one, that's a four, that's also a four, without giving context to it. So I do think that they do need context. They do need to hammer out a good solution for this, as good as they can come up with. I don't think that they should be rushing it. And I think that they've got a lot to learn from the community, from websites like this, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, let me know in the comments below. Again, the discussion on this has been really good. Again, the community has been fantastic at hashing out a lot of the potential problems with this and discussing the points that could be good about it, but also, yeah, being realistic about it and be like, yeah, you know what? Maybe not. And with that, this episode is come to a close. As always, comment below with your thoughts on it. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.